everyone and welcome back to Living Well with Schizophrenia. I'm really, really excited to introduce today's video because we are going to be speaking with Carlos Lorari, who is a nurse practitioner who is also living with the diagnosis of schizophrenia. And so I'm really excited because this is kind of the beginning of a new series that we're trying out where we are going to be interviewing mental health professionals in the field like psychiatrists, nurse practitioners, psychologists, uh, pharmacists, you name it, um, just to kind of communicate their knowledge and expertise to you, our audience, and to kind of figure out how the work they do relates to people who are living with schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. So we are going to be talking with Carlos today about what exactly being a nurse practitioner or being a psychiatric nurse practitioner is like, what that entails for him, and what, how it relates to people or how he can help people who are living with schizophrenia, and also about what changes he would like to see in the mental health care system. He has a really, really unique perspective as someone who is a psychiatric nurse practitioner and also also someone who is living with the diagnosis of schizophrenia. So I'm really excited to kind of learn more about his insights into what changes he would like to see in the mental health care system. Carlos is a psychiatric nurse practitioner based out of the United States. So all of his perspectives are kind of contingent on the, the systems that are at play within the United States, but I think they do speak to larger issues in other countries as well. Um, if you would like to help support this project as well as other projects that we're working on with the Living Well channel, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. We're really working hard to grow the channel and to keep producing new and valuable resources for your audience. So if you would like to help support us in this endeavor, please make sure to check out our Patreon page. Any support is so appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so hi everyone. So today I'm here with Carlos Lorari, who is a psychiatric nurse practitioner. And so, hi, Carlos. Thank you so much for being here today with us. Of course, it's my pleasure. Uh, so can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and um, what you do? Sure. Uh, again, my name is Carlos. Um, by education and training, I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner. I'm also secretary for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. And uh, most importantly, I'm someone living well with schizophrenia. Um, as far as what I do, my day job consists of taking care of patients, these days primarily through uh, telemedical services. Uh, I also teach occasionally for a uh, local university and college. And uh, otherwise, I just try to stay healthy and enjoy my life, playing music and exercising and traveling are, are parts of uh, uh, my hobbies that I enjoy doing as well. Great. So you're very busy and it sounds like you were doing a fantastic job of like living well with schizophrenia, which is Thank really you. great to hear. Um, so I guess diving into some questions for you. So can you tell us a little bit about what being a psychiatric nurse practitioner entails? Sure. Well, being a psychiatric nurse practitioner entails um, several years of education, first and foremost. Usually you have to become a registered nurse first, which you can do through a diploma program or through an undergraduate associates or, or bachelor's program, after which you have to pursue a master's education uh, to become a, a graduate level nurse practitioner. And uh, depending on the education you pursue, you can specialize in different settings or populations such as psychiatry or acute care or anesthesiology, for example. Um, and as far as the day-to-day -day, uh, work functions of being a nurse practitioner, I do a combination of medication and therapy. I uh, manage my patient's medications, uh, make sure they have side effects that are nominal or that they can live with. Um, I also do some therapy, uh, engage my patients on what their goals are, have them reflect on their interpersonal relationships and things like that. And that's uh, most of what a, a psychiatric nurse practitioner does. Great. So kind of like a holistic care model. As that's right. Cool. That's right. Okay. So did your diagnosis affect your decision to pursue this career? Sure. I thought to myself after my diagnosis that I wanted to um, give back to the population I'm part of. Once I got back on my feet, I thought to myself, I want to help other people who have been through similar experiences like myself. And I thought to myself, I also want to uh, work in the mental health field as a clinician. And um, the nurse practitioner model was the most accessible and affordable model. It was allowed me to work part-time and pay my way as I was going through school. And it was um, it took a number of years. It took about four to six years, but it was still more accessible than other paths to becoming a clinician, which take longer. Um, so yeah, I was very much uh, drawn to the mental health field and to the path of becoming a clinician because of my lived experience of overcoming psychosis and schizophrenia. 
Right. So how does your experience living with schizophrenia inform your work as a psychiatric nurse practitioner? I think my experience grounds my work in a strong sense of purpose. I feel very much that I get a strong sense of meaning and identity from the work I do um, providing for this population. And um, I think it also allows me to have a certain degree of empathy also for the population. I very much have struggled with the same things my patients have struggled with, whether it's depression or anxiety or psychosis or substance use. Um, these have all been part of my experience, and I bring that to the table when I see patients, and it hopes, hopefully will allow me to understand where my patients are coming from. Mm -hmm. Do you share with your patients um, about your diagnosis or your lived experience? It depends. Um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes patients look me up on the internet and they come to the table ready to ask questions. Sometimes I meet young adults and especially because they're in a very similar situation to what I've been through, I want to break um, through to them by telling them, you know, look, I've gone through the same experience and I've been able to manage with medication and with staying sober and things like that. Other times patients kind of want a traditional doctor-patient relationship and they just want you to help them and and figure things out for them. So it, it's it's one of the many tools, I think, in my toolbox that I, I use when I feel it's appropriate. Right. I think the empathy piece is really, really important, and that really helped me in my professional role, like as a social worker, too, is just having that empathy for people who are going through even something similar or just similar struggles and whatnot. If that's really helped me. So that's really great to hear that you utilize that in your work as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so how can a psychiatric nurse practitioner help those who are living with schizophrenia or psychosis? I think a psychiatric nurse practitioner can help those living with schizophrenia or psychosis much like they can help any other patients. They're there um, most importantly to help the person get back on track and work towards their goals. And in that sense, we, we work within a holistic framework. Of course, technically speaking, we tend to manage medications and prescribe and and refer to specialists and do therapy and other tools and we use other tools such as those but the, the important thing is 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 helping the person especially if it's a young adult with psychosis or schizophrenia going through a first episode get back on track with their lives and working towards their goals right so what kind of team do you work with in terms of supporting somebody with schizophrenia or psychosis so I usually work in a team-based model or team-based care. I work with case managers and, and counselors that handle different functions. A counselor might specialize more in the therapeutic component and, and delve into deeper therapeutic and longer therapeutic sessions. Case managers may help the patient um, uh, access resources in the community, whether it's uh, uh, accessing citizenship or housing or uh, government benefits, whatever it may be. And, um, and, and of course, I also work with um, specialists such as psychiatrists who oversee a part of the care as well. Right. Okay. So you are kind of like, um, do you kind of or, or facilitate all these this team members in terms of treatment for these people who are living with psychosis or how does that work? I think, I think at the center of it is the patient. Okay. And then the patient is kind of surrounded by these various professionals with different disciplines and different backgrounds. And it just depends on the patient's needs. Whatever the patient's needs are, they will have access and uh, an ability to, to get support from the appropriate professional. Right. Okay. So do you have any advice then for patients who need to kind of like do this self-advocacy or self-navigation of the system or whatnot? Do you have any advice for them about doing that? I think you nailed it on the head. As much as in an ideal world, we'd work in a system of care that is team-based and that creates a clear pathway for people to getting better. You know, the system, including the care that I, you know, that I work within is still fragmented and is far from perfect. So it's important for patients to self-advocate for themselves, to be the drivers of what they want to see, whether it's making sure they get the right medication or making sure they get the right help with school or whatever it is. It's very important that the uh, patient is able to communicate what they need with the support of their family to the people that are there to help them. Great. Okay. So you have a really unique perspective on kind of the mental health care system as both someone who's working in a professional capacity within it and somebody who has had to navigate it on a personal level too as a mental health care patient. So um, as someone both living with schizophrenia and working as a psychiatric nurse practitioner, can you tell us about your experience in both of these capacities going through the mental health care system? Sure. Well, I think you, you kind of hit the issue on the head, which is 
that navigating the system has been the key part of it all, whether it's been as a patient or as a provider, it's a system of care that isn't perfect and requires active advocacy to make sure people get their needs met. As a patient, um, I was very fortunate to have family support and they were really the drivers of my care when I was going through my florid psychotic episode. It was my mom who was making me go to doctor to doctor and navigating the insurance system and trying to make sure that I got care quickly and, um, and trying to get me back to work in a school. And as a patient, I try to, I mean, and as a provider, I try to make sure my patients feel well by managing their medication so that they can stay out of a hospital and stay out of a crisis so then they can move forward with their goals. But sometimes I run up into the uh, challenges uh, or run up against the challenges of a system that is fragmented where people don't always have insurance or uh, care is not communicated between primary care, specialty care, and other issues such as those. Right. Okay. So really like trying to navigate the fragmented care system, both as a professional trying to help your patients and also as someone who's trying to navigate it themselves at times. Exactly. Um, so what changes would you like to see in the mental health care system? I think there's three key changes from a policy perspective that would make a profound difference in the care that all individuals uh, receive regardless of their diagnosis, which would be one, ensuring access to affordable health care. We still have millions of people in the United States that are underinsured or uninsured and ensuring everyone has access to health insurance would go a long way to making sure that people live healthier and safer lives. The other would be ensuring that we have adequate communicate, uh, community-based treatments. Um, so often the, the point of care for people with mental health issues is a cop car or a crisis stabilization unit instead of a professional in a specialty setting or an academic research setting. And aside from access to insurance, and community care, I think the other critical component, uh, which is certainly not the least important, maybe the most important, is early intervention. We need to ensure that people get an intervention um, as soon as the onset of these symptoms occur, because the longer it goes untreated, the more uh, difficult it is to, to manage the condition for many patients. Right. Okay, yeah, I completely agree with all those. So early intervention, uh, community supports, and um, affordable health care. That's right, yep. Yeah, okay, great. So are there any changes particularly to the care provided for those who are living with schizophrenia or psychosis that you would like to see happen? I think the last component is particularly critical for people with schizophrenia and uh, psychosis, which is the early intervention component. Um, often in the literature you hear or you read that people uh, can go years, six, seven, eight years between the onset of psychotic symptoms and getting access to care. And much like any condition, if someone had diabetes and they had um, their uh, diabetes unmanaged and out of control for several years, there are gonna be complications and problems as a result of that. It's very much the same with schizophrenia, where if you go several years without medication, um, there could be consequences for one's uh, abilities, cognitively or otherwise, um, down the road. So it's important that we get care early. And once we get care at the first episode and continue care, I think it's very much possible with time for people to resume a fairly normal life. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So how are you working toward these changes in your work as a psychiatric nurse practitioner? So or as are, a or is it possible to even work towards these changes within your capacity? Sure, sure. As a psychiatric nurse practitioner, I mostly work in direct care with patients. But one of the many uh, cool parts about being a nurse is that you wear many hats, whether it's as an educator or as an advocate or as a clinician or so forth and so on. So one of the roles I most identify with is as an advocate and the organization that I've affiliated most with professionally thus far has been the National Alliance on Mental Illness and NAMI, which is the largest grassroots organization for advocacy for mental health conditions in the United States, um, allows me to engage in advocacy at both the national and the local level. At the national level, we engage in making policy um, and working along with federal organizations like the National Institute of Mental Health. And at the local level, we offer other direct services to people, whether it's free support groups or free um, uh, education classes and things of that nature. Great, okay. And so you have let me know that you were also interested in um, pursuing a law degree. That's right, that's right. So how do you see that factoring into um, advocating for these system changes? Sure. I think a legal education will give me further tools to advocate for populations with mental health conditions. I think it'll allow me to um, 
uh, further specialize in hopefully the legislative process and understand how laws are passed and laws are made and their impact on the consequent health of individuals. That's my, my, that's my hope with attending law school is to specialize in healthcare law and policy and, and work ultimately in the, the policy making or legislative arena and help, uh, help make systemic and population level change through rules and regulations or laws that impact people's health and well-being. Yeah, great. So you mentioned your work with NAMI and being like a grassroots organization being very important as well as your work or trying to pursue addressing policy issues at a more systemic level. So mm-hmm. where do you kind of see the most change being affected or do both need to happen or what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, as is the case with many policy level issues, a lot of the change is happening at the state level. And, you know, in the United States, we have 50 states and they kind of experiment with different methods. Some states expanded Medicaid, for example, and we've been able to see how Medicaid expansion has saved money and and saved lives. Um, Other states have adopted coordinated specialty care, which is a system of care that provides people with first episode psychosis with very intensive wraparound services and um, has provided to be a better than standard of care alone. So it's usually at the state level, at the state level where we see the action and, and depending on the issues that the state has taken up, we've seen different um, advancements in the, the care of people with uh, mental health conditions. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so, so much, Carlos, for joining us today and answering some of our questions and talking about what changes you'd like to see in the mental health care system. Your insights are really valuable. So thank you. Of course. Anytime. Um, it's always so nice talking to you. Hopefully we'll get to talk again soon, but thank you so much again for joining us today. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Bye. So I hope you enjoyed that interview with Carlos and found his insights and experiences interesting. Um, Big, big thank you to Carlos for appearing in our first uh, interview episode in this new project that we're trying out. Um, It was so wonderful chatting with you and I know I learned a lot. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it and don't forget to subscribe too so that you don't miss out on any of the future videos we put out in this series. And don't forget, if you want to help support the creation of future videos like this one, to please make sure to check out our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much again for watching and as, as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. See you in the next video. Bye.